Today's My Health segment brought to you by Choose for Health, the world's first super fruit, sea vegetable, antioxidant, chewable dietary supplement. Now, we've all been told how dangerous cholesterol is, how it clogs your arteries and leads to diseases like stroke and heart attack. But some cholesterol is actually good for you. And without it, believe it or not, you would actually die. Here to tell us more is our resident health expert, Dr. David Friedman. Welcome back to the show. Hey, Beth. Good to see you. Now, we love having you here. Cholesterol is something we hear a lot about. And it, we hear some bad things, but all it's not all bad for you. Not all bad. Actually, without cholesterol, we couldn't survive. Your reproductive system, your immune system, even your bones and teeth need it. In fact, your brain is made up mostly of cholesterol. So the more cholesterol you have in your brain, the smarter you are. In fact, that's why one of the side effects of cholesterol-lowering drugs is a memory loss. Oh, wow, because it's depleting it from your brain. Depleting it from now, your brain. You caught my attention with reproductive system. So I'm in the reproducing years. What, what can cholesterol do for my reproductive system? All right, listen up, husband. <laughs> <laughs> Hormones like estrogen and progesterone in females and testosterone in men, they're created from cholesterol. Wow. So cholesterol also produces a hormone called cortisol. What that does is it helps in regulating blood sugar sugar levels and defending the body against infection. So without cholesterol, we would all be sick. The body also uses cholesterol to make vitamin D to help keep our bones and teeth strong. So it's obvious that we need it in our bodies. So why has it gotten such a bad reputation? Well, I'll answer that question with a question. Uh -oh. What's the number one form of food that we're taught causes high cholesterol? I always hear red meat. Red meat, that is one of them. Let me tell you why. Animals contain cholesterol that their body produces. When we ingest these animal products, we also ingest their cholesterol. So in an effort to balance these two sources of cholesterol, your body adjusts the amount it produces each day. Okay, so let's talk about the good and the bad cholesterol. You hear about HDL and LDL, and I remember from health class, HDL is good because H is healthy. Good way to remember it. Actually, blood is very watery. It's a thin substance, and cholesterol is oily and thick. So as a result, what happens, the two don't mix very well. Okay. So for it to travel through the bloodstream, cholesterol is carried in packages, and these are called lipoproteins. Two kinds of lipoproteins carry cholesterol through your body. One is the high-density lipoprotein. That's the HDL, or as you said, the H for healthy. Uh -huh. Then the low-density lipoproteins, which is the LDL, and that's the bad kind that you don't want in the body. High levels of LDL leads to buildup in cholesterol in the arteries. Now, this is not good because what it does is it narrows and clogs the arteries, leaving a greater chance of heart disease. HDL cholesterol, the good kind, carries cholesterol from other parts of the body back to the liver where it belongs. Think of HDL as the trash cleanup crew going through your bloodstream. The higher your HDL cholesterol level, the lower your chances of getting heart disease. Okay, so let's figure out what we can do, like what foods that you can eat. What foods can you eat that, that raise the good cholesterol and lower the bad? Well, diets high in fiber have been shown to lower LDL cholesterol by as much as 30%. Wow. To raise your HDL, eat more fiber, whole grains like oatmeal, barley, nuts, and beans. Mm -hmm. Also eat fish high in fatty acids like tuna and salmon. Now, what these do is they increase your good HDL cholesterol. In fact, research published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition shows that daily omega-3 fatty acids from fish could lower triglyceride levels as much as 25 percent. Wow. Last recommendation, drink red wine in moderation because what it does is it increases your HDL cholesterol and it has even been shown to have anti-clotting properties. Wow. Now, we've, we've talked about this before right. on the show with you. So the American Heart Association recommends one glass of wine for women per day and up to two for men, right? Exactly. That's the recommendation. That's a statistic that people can drink to, I would say. <laughs> I'll drink to that. Thank you so much for being Cheers. on the show. You help us think outside of the box always. Well, that's great. Well, you know, inside the box is crowded. We need to get outside more. Yeah, it's kind of sweaty inside yes, that sure box. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> If you want to see this story again or if you want to ask Dr. Friedman a question, just go to our website, thebalancingact.com slash askthedoctor.